Hey up guys, so continuing the Venice Film Festival coverage, today's movie up for discussion is the new Western psychodrama from writer-director Jane Campion. It's called Power of the Dog, and she adapted this from the novel of the same name by Thomas Savage. Or Savage. Savage, not Savage. <laughs> I just had to go and make it posh, didn't I? Savage. Thomas Savage. Garbage. Salad. <laughs> I was super excited for The Power of the Dog. This is like Jane Campion's first film in like nearly 10 years. Plus, you can't argue with that cast. You've got Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, and Jesse Plemons. It is Kirsten, right? Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep getting fucking Kirsten and Kristen muddled up? All right, let's just make sure. It is Kirsten Dunst, right? Yes, Kirsten Dunst. Yes, okay. <laughs> I did this the other day in my Spencer review. I was like, is it Kirsten Dunst or Kristen Dunst? And I don't know why my brain has such a hard time remembering their names. <laughs> I always get them muddled up, but yes, Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> While I will say there's lots of elements where this film shines, like music, cinematography, performances, I did think that the overall product felt less than a sum of its parts. Quick reminder though guys, if you want to stay up to date with all my Venice Film Festival reviews, be sure to click the subscribe button, help support my channel by hitting that thumbs up button or by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram, all those links in that video description. The Power of the Dog is set in 1925 Montana and explores the family dynamics of two successful ranch brothers known as the Burbank Brothers, Phil and George, who are played by Benedict Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons. George is gentle, decent, and sensitive, whereas Phil is the exact opposite of George. He's charismatic, he's a natural leader, he's a typical alpha male type, a real man's man, but he's also a brutish, arrogant, homophobic bully. After George marries a widower called Rose, played by Kirsten Dunst, who was the proprietor of a restaurant slash hotel, she and her peculiar teenage son called Peter, played by Cody Smith McPhee, move into the ranch brothers, the brun, the ranch, the ranch brothers, brothers ranch property. <laughs> ranch brothers? Isn't that a type of like salad dressing? <laughs> But yes, she and her son move into the ranch property, but Phil ain't happy about it. Phil thinks that Rose is a gold digger and that her son Peter is a Nancy because of his lanky frame, the fact that he likes arts and crafts, and that he's not really into stereotypically manly things like horseback riding, castrating cows, or wrestling naked with other men in ponds. How is it? <laughs> I don't understand that. How is Peter making flowers out of paper gayer than any of that stuff that he thinks is manly? I don't understand. Just a weird time back then as to what was considered masculine. There's actually a lot going on here in The Power of the Dog, which I have to praise Campion for because it's a family melodrama. It's an exploration of masculinity, but the way that it slowly morphs into this sinister psychological thriller did feel very organic. The way that Campion handles the tonal balance in this film is seriously impressive. She creates an atmosphere that's very taut and you do sit in it whilst you watch this film. But what is it lacking which made the book so highly regarded? I've not read the book, I'm just gonna admit that right now. It's hard to pinpoint because like I said previously, the cinematography by Ari Wegner is luscious. Some of those sweeping canyon shots made me Gork, excellent work from her. Johnny Greenwood, who did the score for Spencer, which I raved about, make sure to check out my review for that film. But yeah, he's provided the score for The Power of the Dog as well. And his string heavy score really adds to the hostile environment of the Burbank home. And yes, I will say that all the performances are superb, but really this film belongs to Cumberbatch. The character he's playing is so imposing, magnetic and confrontational that it kind of feels like all the other players are simply revolving around him. Which I do think is to the film's detriment because while Cumberbatch gets to roam to some pretty intense places, everybody else is kind of sidelined. I know a lot of people were hoping that this might finally be the performance to land Kirsten Dunst her first long overdue Oscar nomination, and while it's perfectly plausible that she might be nominated for this role, I wouldn't say that 
it's a guarantee either. Rose is essentially a prisoner in her own home, tormented by her cruel brother-in-law, so she turns to booze to deal with that pain. Dunst certainly takes us to some emotional places, but her screen time feels quite scattered and her character development felt a little sparse to me. I think what's missing for her character was a few more scenes to sort of pad out that development, her struggle and her pain, and why she turns to booze, because it just sort of happens like in the space of one scene, all of a sudden she's hiding booze around the house, and yeah, it's just a, a rapid bit of development. Uh, we don't really get that journey of her turning to booze, it's just something that, it's almost like a snap decision really. And also in her scenes, she's mostly just kind of there, and next to like, come about, she's like really going for it. She just kind of gets lost in the scene. Like I said, Kirsten Dunst gives the best that she can with what she's given, but the character isn't as well written as it could have been. So when I left the cinema, I just kind of forgot about her. And I hate the idea of labeling Kirsten Dunst's performance as forgettable, but really, that's how I felt after I saw the movie. Jesse Plemons as George, he's really great in his scenes too, but he's severely underutilized as well. His marriage to Rose is like a primary catalyst for a lot of the drama in the story, but the actual relationship between him and Rose is given so little screen time that you just kind of forget that they're married. I honestly didn't care about them as a couple. What was their relationship like? I wish I could tell you. The marriage just isn't explored enough for me to give you an answer on that. Cody Smith McPhee was also terrific as Peter. He's smart, he's strange. You look at him and you can tell there's a hint of menace. I found him quietly captivating as Peter, but again, I just wanted more from his character. So with the exception of Benedict Cumberbatch as Phil, the rule of this film seems to be Great performance, but the character they're playing is underwritten. I've spoken to a lot of people at the Venice Film Festival and on Twitter about this film, and so many people are anticipating a lot of performance nominations at the Oscars for this film, but honestly, I don't really see it. I'm not sure if it's a film that the Academy is gonna connect with. I, I honestly would not be surprised if no one gets an acting nomination here. The person I'd put my money on would be Cumberbatch, but everybody else, I'm not so sure. But what do you guys think? If you've seen The Power of the Dog, do you think it's gonna be nominated for some Oscars? I think it might get some technical nominations like cinematography, maybe the score, maybe production design as well, or costumes, but yeah, I'm not so sure about the acting categories. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comment section down below. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Maybe. Uh, there was a lot about this film that I liked, but it's not really a film that I feel the need to watch twice, so maybe. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? I'm still gonna recommend this one, guys. It's out in select theaters on November 17th, and it's on Netflix on December 1st. It has enough decent attributes to warrant a recommendation. I just think your enjoyment level of this movie will come down to your own individual taste. But I guess you can say that about any film. But yeah, for now, I am gonna say check it out, particularly if you're a fan of like potential award season movies. And third question, what score am I gonna give it out of 10? It's a mixed bag, this film. Like, the story is quite rich and interesting, but it's just a shame it doesn't really have much to say. The talent is definitely here, it's just collectively it didn't all harmonize together. So I'm gonna give Jane Cambion's The Power of the Dog a score of five out of 10. As always guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I would love to hear your thoughts on The Power of the Dog. Whatever you have to say, let me know in that comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do help support the channel by hitting that thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars related content, don't forget to click subscribe, and if you wanna follow me on any of my socials, oh, there's links in that video description down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Airfield, and I'll see you next time.